Hi, I'm Stephen Akinsanya, a barrister from Great James Street Chambers in London. I've been practicing in the area of criminal law for 28 years now, and I want to share with our young people some of the realities of the courtroom process, the Crown Court, and being on trial. For many young people that I represent, there is an unspoken fear because the courtroom has a code. Just as people talk about a code on the streets, there is a code in the courtroom. Many young people are not prepared for this. Being on trial in an adult court is daunting. I have spent many, many days with young people crying downstairs in the cells when they've just received a long sentence for being involved in serious criminal offences, something which is never spoken about or shared out on the streets with their friends. People think there's a lot of bravado and notoriety about being on trial in the courtroom, but it's a completely different kettle of fish when you're on trial yourself and you feel alone, surrounded by adult lawyers wearing wigs and gowns, using language that you don't often understand. And that moment when you have to give evidence from the witness box on oath if you choose to, with 12 strangers looking at you deciding whether you are guilty or not. Many young people don't understand that if you've been in trouble before, your bad character, as we call it in law, will follow you. That is, if you've had previous convictions for similar offences, in all likelihood, those offences will be introduced into your case and the jury will be told about previous offending and that may assist them or inform their decision about whether you are guilty or not. This is often used in drug cases and cases involving the use of weapons. So if you carry a knife or have carried a knife on a number of occasions, then that in all likelihood will be used in a case where you're accused again of carrying a knife. We also use it in the cases of joint enterprise. Joint enterprise is a part of the law which many young people don't fully understand. They usually say, well, I didn't stab anybody, I didn't shoot anybody, so why am I on trial for murder? But joint enterprise means that if you are there at the scene, actively encouraging, assisting or supporting someone, we call the primary offender, and that person uses a weapon to cause serious bodily harm, resulting in the death or in serious injury of a, another person, then you equally could be found guilty. Joint enterprise is used uh, pretty much in most Crown Courts involving young people where there are acts of group violence, and many young people get caught up in this, even though they're not carrying a weapon, even though they're not the principal, but nonetheless they were there and they were actively encouraging. Throughout my years of practice, I've had to visit many young people, young people who are now in prison serving very long sentences, some as long as 25 years. And the reality is that prison is no joke. It's not a nice place. It's a place that doesn't allow you to thrive. It's a place that doesn't allow you to have your own freedom. It's a place that denies you the opportunity to be with your loved ones, your family, your friends. They will only be able to see you maybe once or twice a month when a visiting order is sent out by you for them to come and see you. It's not a place which I recommend to any young person, despite some of the stories that you may have heard. Again, the notoriety is very different from the reality. It affects your mental health. It places you at risk of being involved in serious violence, even sexual abuse. It, it restricts your liberties. It restricts your ability to perhaps get the education that you could have got were you on the outside in mainstream education or school. Of course, it has an impact also on your family because you're not in the family unit. You're not able to converse with them. You're not able to do the things that you would do with your family. And of course, they are away from you wondering how you are faring in prison. So it's really important that you understand that prison is not something to be glorified. It's not something to be revered. It's a very, very difficult and harsh environment, especially now during the period of COVID-19. Many of the young people I represent 
have complained about being uh, remanded in custody uh, for long periods of time, waiting trials, and also for those who are serving prisoners, they are talking about having to spend 23 hours a day in their cells because of the COVID-19 outbreaks in prison. So there are a lot of negative reasons for spending time in prison. People who carry knives generally end up getting prison sentences. Carrying a knife is against the law, unless you can justify a reasonable excuse for carrying something like a pocket knife or a small bladed knife with a blade of at least three inches. Uh, you may have a justified reason for carrying such a knife, but self-defense is not one of them. You may carry it for religious reasons or because you use it in the course of your work. But you, you will have to prove that in the Crown Court or any court that you appear in for possession of a knife or a bladed article. Carrying a knife is not a defence um, in terms of self-defence. Carrying a kitchen knife, there can be no justified reason for carrying a knife. And because of the prevalence of knife crime, a lot of courts now are sentencing young people to terms of imprisonment, either by way of a referral order or for older, or older younger people, terms of imprisonment. It's very rare that you will receive some type of financial penalty, such as the concern of the courts of the number of young people carrying knives. So if you have friends who are carrying knives, I want you to warn them of the pitfalls of carrying a knife. Often many of the people who carry knives end up having those knives used on them, sometimes fatally. Carrying a knife for self-defense is no defense in law. You will need to tell them that they have choices to make about whether or not to carry a knife. And if they make the wrong choice, they have to understand that there are repercussions for doing so. As far as the court is concerned, you are more than likely to receive a prison sentence. As I say, there is a code in the courtroom, a code which many young people don't understand. Being asked questions by very skilled lawyers where sometimes you're confused. The intimidating environment of being in an adult courtroom. The intimidating environment of having to answer questions in public. Questions that may determine what happens to you for a significant period of your young life. You need to think about these things because this is the reality of what happens when you engage in the criminal justice system as a young person. Making the right choices, thinking things through could save you a whole lot of pain, pain that is not spoken about, pain that is hidden until it's your reality. And by then, by the time you see people like me, it's too late.